Creating clean vector halftone patterns in Adobe Illustrator is super easy and a cool way to add a little bit of style to your designs. So let's check out how to make some. I'm a big fan of halftones. I am a screen printer after all, so I do see them a lot, but today we're actually gonna use them as a design element. You can use halftone patterns to spice up damn near any design. You can make them out of traditional circles, or you can make geometric halftone patterns out of squares, diamonds, polygons, and probably some other shapes if you're creative enough. Whatever design you're working on, there's probably a way to complement it with a halftone pattern. I'm gonna show you how to make two different styles of halftone patterns that both give sort of a gradient effect, one that's linear and straight, and one that's staggered. Here's both styles made with a few different shapes, the straight version being a more basic and simple taper, while the staggered version gives you a much more dynamic look, and the gradient effect looks a little bit more like how a halftone pattern would react in practical use. I'm also gonna show you how this can be used in a simple type design, and as a bonus, I'm gonna show you how to make that cool hexagon, honeycomb looking halftone pattern at the end of the video. So you should probably stick around for that. All right, let's get started. I've already got Adobe Illustrator open, but what you're gonna do is open up a new document and have that document sized to 1000 by 1000 pixels. It's important to have the document units set to pixels for more control over setting up the pattern later on. The document color mode doesn't matter, that's your preference depending on what you're working on. The raster effects don't matter because we're not using any raster effects in this artwork, we're using vector stuff, but I've got mine set to high just because that's a habit I have. So once you're in there, the next thing you're gonna go up to view and make sure you have smart guides and snap to point turned on. The next thing you wanna do is go over to your toolbar and grab your rectangle tool or hit the M key on your keyboard and click anywhere on the artboard. You wanna make a square that's 800 by 800 pixels. Once you have that, click OK, hit the V key to bring your selection tool back and we're gonna just center this thing up on the artboard. I'm also gonna remove the fill from the square, but I'm gonna leave this black stroke or add a black stroke if you don't already have one. This is just so that we can see what we're doing later on. Once you have this all done, just hit Command 2 or Control 2 if you're on PC to lock it in place. That way we can't accidentally click on it moving forward. We'll start off with the straight pattern first for the people who maybe are brand new to Illustrator or have never done this before because it's definitely the easier of the two. We're only gonna be using the Shape tool, the Blend tool, and the Transform tool to get this whole thing done. Actually. We're pretty much only using those tools for all of this stuff, so you're definitely gonna get to learn how those work today. Choose what shape you wanna use by right-clicking on the rectangle tool in the toolbar. I'm gonna keep it simple today, use circles for a traditional halftone pattern, so we wanna use the ellipse tool, so click that or just hit the L key on your keyboard to bring that up. The size of the circles that you use is gonna determine how your halftone pattern turns out, so this is where you can kinda play around and experiment a little bit. Smaller circles are gonna give you that more realistic looking halftone gradient, while bigger circles are gonna give you that more exaggerated cartoonish look. I personally think that when using them as a design element that the cartoonish look is a little bit nicer, so that's what we're gonna use today. So you can just hold shift and click and drag out your first circle, or if you want, you can just click down on the artboard and make the exact size that you want. I'm gonna make a circle that's 20 by 20 pixels here to get started, and this will be the first dot in our pattern. I'm also going to change the fill to black and get rid of the stroke. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit here, bring back the selection tool with my V key, and I'm gonna move this thing until the center of the circle intersects with the corner of our guide. That's why we turned on smart guides and snap to point right there. Makes life a lot easier. Next, with it still selected, you wanna click the option key or alt key if you're on a PC and drag a copy up to the top corner. I'm also holding the shift key while I do this so it moves in a straight line. So we'll move that copy up to there. You can see it locked in with the corner of our guide. And I'm also going to change the size of this circle down to two pixels. You can see it stayed locked in on our center point there. Zoom back out, click and drag to select both of those circles at the same time. Go up to object, blend, and make. And that's gonna start filling that gap with a bunch of circles tapering down from the biggest one to the smallest one. Go back to that same menu again, so object, blend, and this time select blend options. Make sure you've got your preview turned on and spacing, the little drop down menu here, make sure it's set to specified steps. And now you can click on this little number here and use your up and down arrow keys on your keyboard to make more or less dots in that blend. Again, this is where you can go with what looks best to your eye. In my opinion, I think a good halftone taper starts off with the first two dots just barely touching. So we're gonna go up to, we're gonna go up to 40 steps here. You can see those first two dots are just barely overlapping each other and click OK. With the blend that you just made still selected, you're gonna go up to Effect, Distort and Transform, 
and click on transform. And again, make sure preview is turned on if it isn't already. Change the amount of copies to any random number right now because that's gonna change. So I'm just gonna put four for now. And we're gonna go up to this move box here and use the horizontal move tool. You can use this little slider if you want, or you can use the number beside it, which is what I like to use. So click on that and use the up arrow key on your keyboard to start dragging out those four copies that we made. What we're looking for here is to have even spacing between these things. So I'm just gonna keep going up until it looks good to my eye. I'm really looking for that little star shape between the two circles to look nice and uniform. I think at 19 pixels, it looks perfect. So we're gonna run with that. I'm gonna click on the amount of copies now and just hold down the up arrow key until it fills up that square. So right there at 42 is good. Click okay. Your blend should still be selected. So now to finish this whole thing up, just go up to object and expand appearance and boom, you've got a bunch of vector halftone dots all nicely grouped together. You can change the color of them. You can really do whatever you want with them now. These are done. You know what, just for fun, I'm gonna stick this inside of a clipping mask just to clean it up. So I'm gonna bring up the M key and draw a square around these things. Let's get it all nicely centered up with each other. Actually, I'm gonna move that square up just a little bit to right there. Select both, hit Command-7 to make a clipping mask. There we go. That looks a little bit better now. And that's our finished straight line halftone pattern. Moving on to the staggered style. This one is so much cooler and it looks rad as shit using a bunch of different shapes. The diamond and the hexagon being my personal favorites. But quickly before we do that, I'm gonna take a few seconds to mention today's video sponsor, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community filled with all kinds of killer classes to help you learn damn near anything. We're obviously working with Illustrator today and Skillshare has a seemingly endless amount of classes covering everyone from the day one beginner to the seasoned pro. A good one to check out would be the Illustrator Essentials Training by Daniel Scott. And because they're sponsoring today's video, Skillshare is giving away a free one month trial membership to the first 1,000 of you guys who join the community using the link in the description below. I learned all the tools that we're using here today on Skillshare years ago when I was a noob. So definitely check that out if you're interested in learning more about how this stuff works. Back to work. So the first step in this one is the exact same as the other one. So hit the L key to bring up your ellipse tool, click and make a 20 pixel by 20 pixel circle. We're gonna drag that and intersect it with the bottom corner of our guide. Option shift drag to bring a copy up to the top corner. We're gonna change this one to two pixels by two pixels, the same as the other. And now we're gonna select both of them at the same time and option shift drag to bring a copy of them to the other side of our guide here. We're gonna use the blend tool again, but this time in a little bit of a different order. So we're gonna select the bottom two dots to start off with because those are the more important ones that determine how this pattern turns out. Go up to object, blend, make, and then back to object, blend, and blend options. Again, we're gonna use specified steps and we're just gonna crank this up to get the amount of circles in there that we want. Again, this is where you can use your eye and go with what looks best to you. You can experiment with more dots or less dots and it makes different styles of patterns. I'm going for that nice smooth gradient effect. So I'm gonna go up until the dots are either touching or almost touching. So I'm gonna go up here to, we're gonna go with 38 because well, you know. Now select the two smaller top dots. And we're gonna do the same thing again. So object, blend, make and we're gonna go to object blend, blend options, and we're gonna make sure those steps are set to that same number that you used. So in this case, 38, hit okay. Next, we're gonna select both of the top and the bottom sets of dots, and we're gonna go up to object and expand to turn those into shapes. With them both still selected, go up to object, blend and make, and again, object, blend, blend options, and change the specified steps to the same as the other two, 38 and then one more time we're gonna go up to object and expand to turn those into a bunch of vector shapes I know it looks like we just made the same thing, but stick with me here. This is where it gets cool So with your pattern still selected go up to effect distort and transform and transform and we're gonna change the amount of copies to one and now we're gonna use the same move tool except we're gonna use the horizontal and the vertical so we'll start off with the horizontal and start pulling that out and the vertical Start pulling it down a little bit. And now you can see we're getting that cool vector gradient halftone effect. This part is gonna change depending on the size of the dot that you used or the different shape that you used. But what you're looking for here is to get that new group of shapes offset and centered between the originals. So I've already done this size of a dot before, so I know to get it dead center between the other ones that I need to go 10-5 on the horizontal and 10-5 on the vertical 
to make it perfectly centered. And lastly, to finish this thing up with it still selected, all you have to do is go up to object, expand appearance, and all your vector shapes are ready to go. If you want to, you can go to the Pathfinder and unite them and make one solid shape out of it. And actually, I'm gonna stick this inside of a clipping mask again, just because it looks really weird with those bulbous circles hanging outside the outer edges. So again, I'm just gonna drag a box around it, get these two centered up on each other. I'm gonna move this up a little bit on this one too, and select both, Command-7 to clipping mask it, and there we go, now our vector pattern looks nice and finished. So let's check out this style of a pattern inside of a piece of type real quick. I already have my favorite saying built out of one of our awesome fonts called Bludgeoner. The link for that is also in the description. It's good. I made my pattern for this by using a rectangle as a guide rather than a square. And I sized the rectangle according to where I wanted those half tones to land within the text. The steps to create the pattern remained the same. The only thing that changed was the amount of copies in that blend and the numbers I used to offset the two patterns at the end. But I'm gonna style this thing up real quick. So this text has kind of like a drippy toxic look to it. I think it looks badass. So I've got these slimy green colors to go with this thing. So I'm gonna select the top text with this bright green. Also the middle text with this bright green and the bottom one with the darker green. Now I'm gonna select my halftone pattern. I'm gonna turn that into the darker green as well. And I'm gonna move it into that center text to where I kind of want it to lie in there. So that looks kind of even at the top and the bottom. Actually, those guides are telling me it's, it's dead center. So we're gonna run with that right there. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select that type. I'm gonna hit Command C to copy and Command F to paste in place. And that new layer that we just pasted should be the one that's selected. So I'm gonna right click and go down to arrange and bring to front to put it in front of the halftone pattern. To finish it up is pretty simple. With that top layer still selected, hit Command-8 to turn it into a compound path, hold down your Shift key, and click your halftone pattern, so that should be your top layer and the halftone pattern both selected at the same time. Hit Command-7 to turn that into a clipping mask, hit Yes, and now your halftone pattern is inside there. We just gotta finish it up by adding some more dark green to the bottom of this thing. So I'm just gonna double click on my letters real quick to go inside of that clipping mask, bring up the rectangle tool with the M key, and draw a box down on the bottom of our letters here. So I just want it to meet the bottom of our halftone pattern right there. And turn that to the darker green, hit the escape key, and that's it. Our piece of type is done and that looks so sick. Actually, maybe let's color this outline too because we're already here. Let's make this purple. Yeah, that's some Frankenstein shit right there. I couldn't figure out which one of these I like better, so here's both of them. The point is, this just shows that these patterns can make a simple looking design look pretty badass easily by adding that little bit of razzle dazzle. Not sure how I just said badass and razzle dazzle in the same sentence, but whatever, I'm running with it. All right, now for our bonus hexagon geometric pattern. This one is all the same steps as the last pattern that we just did. It's just a little bit more difficult because a hexagon is not an even shape all the way around. This one requires a really good eye and and a little bit of patience. So I'm already set up here with my hexagon shapes in the four corners of my guide. The only thing here is you gotta make sure that the bottom are 20 pixels wide and not tall. Same thing with the top, they're two pixels wide and not two pixels tall. If you don't know how to make a hexagon, just right click on the rectangle tool and go down, select polygon tool, click and drag out a shape, but don't let go of your mouse just yet. Use your up and down arrow keys to add or remove the amount of sides on your shape. And then if you wanna straighten it out with it still clicked, just hold down the shift key and then you can let it go. So same first step, we're gonna select the bottom two shapes, go up to object, blend and make. And before we go to the next menu, we're gonna zoom in just a little bit on these things and then go object, blend and blend options. Here we're looking to have an even amount of spacing between all the shapes. So you're gonna to have to eyeball this one. I'm gonna go up to 26 looks pretty good. You can see between here, it looks like this would be the same size of a hexagon shape as our actual shapes, so that looks good. I'm running with that. Go back and select your top row. We're gonna go object blend again, make, blend, and blend options. We're gonna change that number to the same 26 steps. Select your top and bottom row, object expand, okay. And again, we're gonna kinda zoom in a little bit here towards your bottom row. This is where the amount of steps that we use is gonna be different than the others because a hexagon is a lot wider than it is tall. So we're gonna go to object and blend, make, object blend, blend options, and we're gonna crank up the amount of steps until those first two, the bottom two hexagons are 
just about touching each other. So as close as you can get. Right there is perfect at 45 steps. There's basically a ball hair separating those two. So perfect, we're running with that. Go up to object and expand to turn that into a group of vector shapes. And again, we're gonna zoom way in tight on this bottom group of hexagons. We'll go up to effect, distort and transform, transform, and change the copies to one and start messing around with that horizontal and vertical just like we did before. To get these things to line up is gonna take a fair bit of tweaking and definitely some patience. This is why we zoomed in so tight. You're also probably gonna to have to go up to the 100th decimal place to line these things up right because even if they're off a tiny little bit, you can tell. At least I can, but I'm a crazy person. <laughs> so to get these lined up, I'm gonna set my horizontal to 14.82 and set the vertical to 8.62. And there we go, that's nice and centered. I already did this once earlier, so don't think I pulled those numbers out of thin air. I'm not that smart. And to finish it up, we're gonna go one more time to object, expand appearance, and that's it. You've got a clean honeycomb, hexagon, vector, halftone pattern thing that looks, oh, so good. And that's everything. Making vector halftone patterns really isn't that hard, but it is a awesome tool to have in your arsenal. The beauty of these things is they're infinitely scalable, being vector, obviously, and you can make a bunch of them today, save them and drop them into your design work later on anytime you need them. If you learned anything here today, please show some love back by slapping that thumbs up button for me. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Thanks for watching guys. We'll see you again in the next one. Where are you, little cat? Don't come up here. I'm recording stuff, please. You listen real well. <laughs> here, you wanna be on camera so bad? Look, there you go. Now get out of here. Better be fucking screen recording. That'd be stupid if I didn't do that, huh? We're screen recording in three, two,